My name is Carla Day Johnson and I'm with the Hedberg Public Library Art Committee. We're doing something a little different today. We're having a tribute video to Bill Fassbender, who was an artist from Janesville. And Bill Fassbender passed away in June, but his artwork remains and I'm here today talking with his daughter, Kelly Gazolu, mm -hmm. and his wife Sue Fassbender. Welcome. It's, a, it's good to have you today. I'm so glad you could come. Thank you. Thank you. We want to talk today about Bill's artwork that he did while he was battling cancer. So, so tell me his story. Well, I, back in 2013, he found out that he was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. And at that point, they caught it early on. So he started doing his treatment, uh, chemotherapy, and also with radiation. Mm -hmm. Then it led up to a large surgery that he had to do up at the UW-Madison Hospital. During that surgery, it was scheduled and he had to take off, was it 13 inches? Six. Oh, nope, sorry, half that length. So six inches of his esophagus was taken in the top quarter of his stomach. Okay. So that was a large surgery that caused him many sleepless nights that led up to him discovering a way to keep himself occupied, deal with his anxiety mm -hmm. all throughout his treatment that followed afterwards as well. Most times um, he couldn't sleep at night too well, either because of the discomfort of the surgery, mm -hmm. uh, because he could no longer lay flat anymore. He always had to sleep at an angle oh, okay. because he no longer had the flap that goes with your esophagus. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, because of that, he would get up and he always used to doodle even before his sickness, mm -hmm. when he was either talking on the phone or... Oh, he, he was a doodler from way back? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I guess just one day he was, in, you know, encouraged to go ahead and why don't you just go ahead and start actual painting? Uh -huh. um, so he would do that at night times when he couldn't sleep. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, art therapy in itself is a, is a widely used method to help people cope with anxieties or illnesses. Um, what kind of uh, help did he get from the community with that? Where did he, where did he learn to, to paint? So he really just kind of self-taught. Um, he okay. would like to go to this library and he would like to choose different books and he'd look at all the different drawings and to see about different techniques and mm -hmm. he loved watercolor so he, that was his medium of choice. Okay. Uh, everything is done with watercolors. So in order to, you know, kind of bridge out to other people that were doing the same kind of thing that he was. Mm -hmm. So he was of age to go to the senior center, which he was proud of. And okay. so then he made it out to the senior center and he started doing um, classes on Mondays. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so, so he just went once a week to the senior center? Yep. And then the rest of the time worked at home? Yes. Okay. And, and how did he see... Tell me how, what you think he felt as far as how that art therapy helped him. Well, he, he had many things going through his mind all the time, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of anxiety because he didn't know what exactly was going to, you know, what his future was going to be, mm -hmm. uh, whether or not all of his treatments would help him live a longer life or whether or not his cancer was going to take his life mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. So of that unknown drove him crazy. Uh, he would, that's the reason too for staying up at night. And okay. So he would use the paint and everything to calm down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and um, I understand the Gazette, the Janesville Gazette did an article about him and his artwork and how it was art therapy for him. Did the people that he painted with down at the senior center know what was going on? Did they know his history? Yes, they knew. Um, when he started going there, he met a couple of the ladies there because he was the only man there, so no. they enjoyed his company. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so he would sit there with uh, about you know four to five other ladies that were down there that were uh, about, I don't know, 15 or so years older than him, and mm -hmm. he told them what he was going through. So you know, with his treatments, maybe he had a treatment earlier that week or last week, and mm -hmm. then he would go in, and the ladies would always ask him how he's feeling, and how he's doing. So it was nice for him to have those extra friends. Oh yes. Now I understand that you had a part in his life at this time as well while he was painting and you, you talked about it and enjoyed sharing things about it. Yes. Tell me about that. So I was with him through most of his treatments. I used to bring him there to his chemotherapy treatments okay. and stay with him. 
Um, and then at nighttime when he was painting, sometimes I'd be getting home from work later at night when I was still going to college. Mm -hmm. So I would look and see what he was doing. But usually when I came home, he would stop painting. Yeah. So he liked to paint in his own private moments to okay. when no one else was around. If someone woke up and got up, he would stop painting. Oh, okay. So we always kind of had to wait and see, you know, what it was that he was now, doing Now, do you think he was night. bashful about painting in front of someone, or was that just sort of his private thing? I think it was just his private thing that he enjoyed doing on his own, and if someone else was in the room, it just... You know, I guess you would rather be talking with that person in the room rather than okay. focusing on his artwork. Okay. And and I, I didn't know, but was he a man who was very focused? Was he, you know, intent on, was he an intense person? Um, I guess either way. He was a very comical person. He had a very dry sense of humor. Not everyone always, you know, understood mm -hmm. what he was trying to come across, but, um, you know, he loved his artwork and the fact that he would look at it, he'd have some kind of picture in his head, mm -hmm. he would draw it out, and he'd finish every single one. He never left one unfinished. Really? Yes. Amazing. And he would turn out, you know, maybe four paintings a week sometimes. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so very, very prolific. Oh. Yes. Now, I understand he himself registered to display his work at the library. It was his idea to bring his work here and display it. Yes, he was encouraged um, by his art teacher down at the senior center, mm -hmm. um, suggesting, you know, your artwork is very good, and, you know, you should think about maybe showing that to the public at the Hedberg Public Library. Okay. So then he thought about it and thought about it, but he never thought of his artwork as good enough mm -hmm. <laughs> to be a, in an exhibit, but then he decided that he would like to go and do that, so he did enroll himself for a time here at the art exhibit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now, how long from the time he started painting until his death? How much time passed? So, I would say he started in t 2014. I think so, if not 2013. Oh, I'm sorry, 2013. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was when his surgery was. So, I would say he painted for a year? His first year, his point to get in was 100 paintings. Okay. And he made it. And now we have well over 200, I believe. Okay. So, yeah. He kept at it. Okay. I would say he probably stopped painting when he found out he had stage 4 mm -hmm. esophageal cancer. He, he just didn't have a will in him anymore to yeah. sit down and paint. And the kind of person that he was, um, his uh, oncologist he always wanted to see his pictures, but we never, you know, he was very busy. Yeah. So we towed the pictures in, and Doc would say, yeah, I want to see him. Well, then he was with the next person, and he took him back to show the gals, and they looked at him. But um, at this point, with Bill's dry humor, he did say, um, well, you need to look at these, and, and he says, you know, they're going to be worth a lot more when I'm dead. <laughs> and, you know... <laughs> Did the oncologist think that was funny? <laughs> he, he just said, oh, come on, you know, but, you know, that that's how he was, you know, open-minded in that way, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that covers a lot of pain and misery that it you uh, suffer through that way. Um, he had his first cancer in 1980. Okay. And then this came from a spot on his leg, and they said it was melanoma, which led to a PET scan, and that's where he lit up with esophageal. Okay. And we even have had two sheets of paper from the doctor saying that he was cured with esophageal. Oh. So, but it's it's a tough one. Yeah, that's. It's and it was early way. stages, rather, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, did he have an opportunity during this time that he painted to um, commiserate with other people or, or talk about either his artwork or the art therapy that he was doing? I think a lot of people, and <coughs> when we decided that he needed hospice, mm -hmm. then the caregivers that came, oh mm -hmm. my gosh. He, they fell in love with him. <laughs> yes, yes, and he, one time he was sitting there and he was telling his caregiver about this particular painting, mm -hmm. and I was on the couch listening and I talk, was talking with my brother-in-law sitting next to me and Bill turned to me and he says, you're interrupting the artiste. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that shut me down for a minute there, but he, yeah, he just glowed. He just glowed when he talked about it. Okay. So it, it did, it did things for him. Yes. 
but it also was a way to communicate with people about something that... And I think it helped us, too, to see that he had some kind of goal, that he wasn't just sitting there wallowing in mm -hmm. his illness. Well, and don't you think sometimes when people are gravely ill, all people do is ask them about it, so that's all they have to mm -hmm. talk about. This gave him a release of something else to talk about and something else to do, and... Yes. Yeah. Very true. And it kept him going out of the house. If he was going to the senior center, that was, that yes. was good. Right. Yeah. And, and just for the kind of person that he was, he had to go up to have uh, upper GIs mm. at uh, UW mm -hmm. because they didn't have the ultrasound uh, insert down here. So the one time he went up and they did a light therapy, and I don't know why, I guess he thought I couldn't drive, but that's how some guys are. Yeah. <laughs> well, so he had to protect his skin, and um, he drove all right. He had on a camo hoodie. <laughs> and all you could and sunglasses and all you could see I said anybody's gonna think you just robbed a bank. <laughs> so yeah, yep. That was hilarious. Is that I don't a know. part of his medical treatment? Yes. And why do you think when he got to the stage four, did he just was he just too tired? I think he was ready to go until we went in that day yes. and the doctor told him that you're terminal. Really? And uh that was May that was the beginning of May of 2014. Yes. And then Kelly got married July 5th, and we really felt he would make it there. Mm -hmm. um, but he did not. He went downhill fast, and I think simply the cancer was aggressive. Mm -hmm. And he was fighting and fighting and fighting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he fought long and hard. Probably the last three weeks, too, he was delusional oh, also. Yeah. So that paid a you know, pretty oh, big sure. factor sure. in him not being able to paint anymore. Yeah, and when back to the painting too as well, uh, like Kelly said, he um, would ask my opinion. I don't know if he asked yours, but I, he'd ask my opinion or he'd paint so far and leave it on the table. Mm -hmm. So we'd walk by, mm -hmm. look, and I said, "Are you done?" Well, no. And he said, "What do you think?" <laughs> and I tell him, he never changed a thing. <laughs> never. He didn't really want your opinion. No. Yeah, it, it was his way. <laughs> But that's good. That was his expression. I think one time I got him to change my hair color. He painted one with hair color, and it wasn't quite blonde enough. But, uh, yeah, it, certainly his interpretation. And he just never got to the point where he could draw people. But, yeah. He tried his darndest, but they always turned out not looking like people at all. <laughs> <laughs> and was he amused by that or no. not so much? Not he so was, much. I don't he, know. He, he tried, but, you know, he kind of little disheartened, I think. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and now, during his lifetime, what did he do for employment? What uh, what brought him to the art, I guess? Is, you know, you said he always liked watercolor. Um, well, he never pursued it, and we always told yeah. him he was talented. Um, he was always a hands-on guy, though. Yeah. He worked it down at the Janesville plant for GM. Oh, okay. So, I mean, he would always, you know, be doing something tactile like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, even when he was younger, you know, he retired at 50, so he then he took on a part-time job, and then they downsized, you know, and crashed in 2008. So then he found himself with not too much to do, but he was always, uh, you know, fixing, putzing around, and then the illness brought it, this on. And mm -hmm. Yeah. But he always had an artist's eye. He always oh, had yeah. yeah, and yeah. I tried. We were married almost 37 years, and I tried to get him to get going on it, but, mm -hmm. well, I can't do it. Well, yes, you can. <laughs> Tried to get him to take classes, which takes me back to the point that um, the teacher at Senior Center said. Mm -hmm. She says, well, that's usually not the way they do it, what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And he just would look at her and move on. <laughs> and she says, but that's okay. That's your way to do it. And he's like, uh-huh. <laughs> well, he didn't have time to wait around and, and no. do things in no. any particular fashion. No. He just dive right just in. how he wanted to have his done. interpretation <laughs> for certain. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's good. That makes it the most genuine. Yes. Right, right, yeah. and and we that's why all of his paintings have a special meaning, and um, in the very end, we I wanted to interview him and get him on tape mm -hmm. and talk about each one, but sadly he was too sick to do that. Wow. That was a, really would have been a gift, but now we have his paintings and this beautiful show we get to do. So yeah, well, it's certainly an honor for us to be able to talk about his work and to see it hang for the month of uh, October. Let's talk about some of the pieces that you brought sure. in. His work. Okay, tell me, uh, tell me about this. 
That one's called Salty Bouquet. Um, salty. Bouquet. Salty Bouquet. All mm -hmm. right. So it's salty. Everything is that he's done is watercolor, but he, salty. We named this one because he actually used salt, as you can see here uh, in mm -hmm, the background. Mm -hmm. Salt in the background effect. Yes. And he read about that in one of the books that he used to check out. Okay. And so he wanted to try it one time, and he said, "Oh, that's really neat." So <laughs> he just wanted to give it a shot one time. He didn't do colors. the typical watercolors. He liked bright colors, as you'll see mm -hmm. on all his works. But he says, I just want to do it to see how it's supposed to be done. And he, if he couldn't do anything, <clears throat> he would grab a book here at the library and uh -huh. read. Read about it? Yeah, and do it, just like that. Excellent. Yeah. That's good. Well, and he obviously liked the bright colors. That's, um, yes. yes. Some people have the idea that watercolors are those pastel... Faded out. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and they don't have to be. Um, the, the, the paint itself is, can be very vibrant, and it's, yes. it's very nice the way he used it. Okay, this one? This one is called Free at Last. Um, okay. Next door to our house, uh, there was a large field for a long time where a lot of mon uh, monarch butterflies, as you see there, they used to frequent. Mm -hmm. And as kids, my brother and I, sometimes we would go next door to the field and then we'd go ahead and collect some of the caterpillars, mm -hmm. bring them in, watch them grow. Sometimes she would bring them to her school where she worked at, Harrison Elementary. Oh, okay. And um, we used to show them to the kids. And so this was some uh, a butterfly that he really liked and uh, we named it Free at Last because just, you know, as he went through his treatments and then finally when he did pass, he was no longer in pain. Mm -hmm. So that was the most special of all of his paintings. Oh, and a little bit okay. more on this too, this particular mm -hmm. painting is his care was given to him by a grace and um, he had to go to Fitchburg because James Hall wasn't ready yet. Okay. And um, we, let's see, when he was down here, he w I take it back, he was not down here, I went in and wanted, when I was up at the Grace at Fitchburg, mm -hmm. there's a lot of beautiful paintings up there. Okay. And I thought, I really wanted to give something. <clears throat> And there's a lot of dedications you can do money-wise for rooms mm -hmm. and sayings and things. Um, so, of course, Fitchburg's been around for a while. So when they built the one down here, I went out and talked to Jamie Roth and said, I'd really like to put something together in his name, donate some money. And um, I really would like to give a painting, too. And she says, well, we really don't do that because they wanted to make sure nothing was offensive. Well, of course, that one came to mind. And so I said, gee, I'm making the donation. Um, do you kind of <laughs> think you could have the picture, how about in the room? Mm -hmm. Oh. So the last part of his life, he, he was uh, dealt with a therapist at group on Thursdays, I believe, in the chemo area. Mm -hmm. There was a few people that came. And then us as a couple did with the same person mm -hmm. at his office. And then I still am doing the same thing too with that same counselor and so um, Kelly and I came up with a saying at the room there was one room left guess what it was a counseling room mm -hmm. so out to a grace here in Janesville mm -hmm. we have our words we made up and they turned out beautiful and right straight in is that picture excellent mm -hmm. yes oh, so he'll nice. be there forever yes and people will be looking and enjoying yes, yes. Oh, that's very nice all right, and what have we got here? Here, as you can see, there's Indians and teepees and kind of the Old West setting. Uh -huh. um, it's called Native Americana. And my dad, didn't matter if you were going out of the house, anytime you come back and he was watching TV, he'd always have it on Wii TV all the time with the old shows. <laughs> and he would always be watching those shows. He would watch the same show, whether he's seen the same episode, <laughs> millions of times. So he loved, you know, everything, knowledge of Indians. So and the cowboy Indians? Yes, kind of the cowboys okay. and Indians. So he just chose to paint one about those. And those people actually did turn out very nice, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, he had a friend, too. Go His ahead. friend, Indian Al. Yeah. Um, from work, that's what he was called. And, and uh, Bill gave him deer skins okay. that he got. And 
Al took them <coughs> together and made him a whole outfit from head to toe. Oh. Because he did wow. black powder gun oh. shooting. Oh, yeah. And so he's, Bill, ever since I've known him, he's been interested in uh, Indians and, and all of that. And back in the history of his family, um, somewhere along the line, and I'd have to say it in general, I can't prove any of it, <laughs> but he, they claim that someone in his family was the first one to shake Geronimo's hand. The so first I, white man. First white man, yes. <laughs> so I, I guess that's where the interest stemmed, mm -hmm. and of course that, and all the shows like, you know, Kelly said, Bonanza and <laughs> Gunsmoke. <laughs> and, yes, he loved that. He was fascinated with it. He liked that part of uh, history. Mm -hmm. He was a big history person. He could tell you everything about history, as well as Kelly. They both have that in Mr. common. Yeah. And is yes. that what you do for a job? No, actually, I, I'm a language teacher. Okay. So right now I'm actually teaching the kindergarten, but I teach it all day in Spanish. It's in oh. a dual language program. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, it's amazing the, the wide range of interests that he had. Yes. And, and he, he put that into his artwork. Um, you said you have almost 200 paintings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a wide variety of subjects, I take it. Yes. Yeah, most of this kind of nature setting. I, I was going to say, did he have a favorite? I, not really, but it just seemed. He even commented, "How come I come up with flowers a lot?" <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to encourage him. You know, it was probably too much for him to think about at the time that to make some note cards because mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of people that would have bought those. So, but that still can be done in the mm -hmm. future. But I okay. don't know. He did say that he. Yeah. I would say anything that he saw around him mm -hmm. yeah. is something that he kind of tried to paint, like yeah. outside in nature, as I mm -hmm. mentioned, or, you know, something Well, then once he, he started to. painting, then did he go on John's to specifically look for things to paint? I mean, uh, there's one upstairs that's an exhibit where he, we have a milkweed plant uh -huh. um, that's right by the mailbox, and so he would go and he sometimes would take his own pictures, mm -hmm. and then he would try to draw from those pictures. Okay. Okay. So there's one that's depicting a milkweed flower with a different kind of a bug on it. Mm. So, I mean, he would do small trips, but he wouldn't go too far out. Yeah. Just what, whatever was kind of around him, I think. It's amazing yeah. that he captured his, his uh, life right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He pulled up a lot of memories. He would go up north. He was a deer hunter. He mm -hmm. was a trap shooter, black powder gun. Um, oh. Even bow and arrow sometimes. Yes, bow and arrow. He was good at that. Yeah. Um, what's the other thing? He looked for treasures. Oh, he liked to do uh, metal detecting? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He would always frequent the Lion Beach. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> yeah. He would always like to go down there. He would always find some interesting things like old arrowheads, yeah. for example, with the Native oh. Americans. Oh, sure. That fit they right seemed in. authentic. I think they were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, I understand that uh, you have a plan for what to do with the profits from the sale of his artwork. Well, it just came to my mind, which often things do lately, I think he's still buzzing around, <laughs> whispering in my ear, and and um, it just, like I said, came to mind that someone would uh, pursue art in one of the local schools mm -hmm. that um, I decided that that money, that the sales of all his painting will put in an account and okay. look for kiddos that would, it would benefit them for their college. Very nice. I know Kelly was recipient of some and when he worked at GM, GM had a piece that they gave the kids, you know, for scholarships mm -hmm, and that. Mm -hmm. And I see firsthand how it helped her. So I thought, oh, that sounds like a good thing to do. Good idea. And mm -hmm. very, it's inspirational. And I think uh, Kelly and I both feel how much it helped Bill get through his life. Well, you know, there is a um, there's a um, an area of study strictly dealing with art therapy. Mm -hmm. um, people go to school, get a Bachelor of Arts, and, and then go on to include that with a therapy degree and use exactly that kind of benefit that, you're, uh, that Bill received from it to, uh, to encourage people to get better, and it teaches them how to do it. Um, he had the gumption and the go-get-em to do it himself. Yeah. Uh, not everybody does. and so uh, A good friend of mine I worked with at school, um, lo and behold, her daughter went to college to be an art therapist. She was always going to interview Buell, but it just never worked out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, have him for a subject. I thought, oh boy, she didn't run away from that, <laughs> I don't know. He was full of it in, in all respects of being silly and that. But she is teaching art therapy and she just loves it. So it, 
It'd be nice to we find know. someone like that that we yeah. can yes. give some yeah, money maybe to. Maybe someone like yes. that who, who has that as an aim. That's that's such a worthwhile cause, a scholarship in that respect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It seemed appropriate. Good idea. Good idea. Great idea. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I have those. <laughs> <laughs> now, of the 200 or so paintings, do you have them all framed? Um, not all of them, because there are so many, but mm -hmm. we do have them well protected in different, you know, anti-acid sleeves, so that okay. way there will be no yellowing or fading of this beautiful artwork. Okay. All right. We just hustled and got this done for the show. Yes. <laughs> so we're kind of doing it in pieces. Mm -hmm. Well, we are so looking forward to seeing his artwork displayed for the month of October, and I want to thank you both for coming in and talking with us today. It's, um, it's uh, our pleasure to be able to view his work. Even though he's not with us, I know he's looking over us. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in. Thank Thanks, you, Marla. Join us for the month of October to view Bill Fassbender's artwork that will be on display at the library as a tribute to his life here on Earth. Thank you.